to it. This is the uh, Matt Taibbi article on Russiagate from Rolling Stone. Russiagate may have been aimed at Trump to start, but it's become a way of targeting all dissent. The article is called The New Blacklist. Yep, Putin loves you, therefore you love Putin. The enemy retweets you, therefore you're in a league with the enemy. We're at war with them, we're, they're at war with you. One of the first rules of a shunning campaign is that it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be what everyone's saying. Since most Americans went to high school, we tend to be instinctively familiar with the concept. The crazy inverse logic of the new national blacklist was on full display after Pro Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller indicted 13 Russian troll farm operatives in February. In the wake of this foreign meddling charge, CNN reporter Drew Griffin banged on the door of an elderly female Trump supporter named Florine Goldfarm and accused her of being a Russia collaborator. Goldfarb had attended a pro-Trump rally uh, allegedly promoted on Facebook by Russian trolls. There were no Russians at the rally. The group didn't meet to discuss the subjugation of Abkhazia. They were plain, ordinary Florida Trump supporters. But not according to CNN. The group was Russians, Griffin said accusingly. I have nothing to do with Russians, the old lady said. Maybe you didn't know it, Griffin countered, but you did. <laughs> you don't even know it. We're here to protect you. Wow, I, I, uh, that's thought police. That's what that is. This is thought police. This is Orwell in real life. That's what this is. You didn't know it, but you did. I, I think I want single pair. No, no, no. Russia brainwashed you to think you want that. Russia, yeah, you don't really... Uh, you know, I really connected with Bernie Sanders' message. Oh, Russia brainwashed you. You know, Hillary Clinton was the worst nominee uh, in my lifetime. No, Russia brainwashed you. No, no, I think she actually was. I don't think Russia brainwashed me to know that she was pro-Wall Street, pro-fracking, pro-war, got it wrong on Iraq, got it wrong on, on pretty much every drone strike, got it wrong for years and years, used to be for something close to single payer until the uh, pharma, big pharma bought her out. I think that was all shit I knew since 2008. I don't think Russia brainwashed me into any of that shit. I don't think Russia brainwashed me into observing the fact that Hillary Clinton wasn't expected to earn people's votes. She was just, she was just entitled to them. She was entitled to your vote. And if you didn't just give it to her, shame on you. She didn't come and get my vote. She didn't do that. You know who did? Jill Stein. Jill Stein went and got my vote. Jill Stein showed up in California. She showed up at town halls. She said the importance of getting the Green Party to 5%. She said the importance of breaking up the two-party duopoly because it's pretty much one party, and that's the money party. She went and she spoke about that, and she spoke about her policy ideas. And after hearing her, I thought, why would I even consider voting for one of these two candidates? I live in a safe state, first of all. Second of all, why would I even consider when I can cast a vote that could help break up the two-party duopoly, that could help lead to an actual Green New Deal? That's actually a policy platform that I can get behind. I voted for Jill Stein. I'd do the same thing tomorrow. And what nerve of anyone to say that some some foreign entity brainwashed me into doing it? Because I saw I saw a rainbow Bernie with abs and thought, oh shit, everything's changed. This is thought police. This is Orwell. That's what this is. It is possible that we actually have a Russian agent running the House Intel Committee on the Republican side, MSNBC. Anchor John Hillman posted not long ago. The main source, okay, Hamilton 68, a website purporting to track the work of Russian social media bots in real time. So there, there's a website dedicated to this. The Russians, Hamilton 68 now said, were sowing discord on both sides of the gun control debate by pushing contradictory hashtags like gun control now and NRA. Uh, the New York Times put a piece about Russia's parkland meddling on page A1. Fox wrote a story. That's because Russiagate from the start was framed as an indictment not just on one potentially traitorous Trump, but all alternative politics in general. 
the story has evolved to seem less like a single focused investigation and more like a broad institutional response to a spate of shocking election results targeting the beliefs of disconnected Americans across the political spectrum. Here's the end of the article. Parts of the Russiagate story may be real. Sleazeballs like Paul Manafort and Trump are, like Putin himself, capable of anything. We'll find out soon what exactly they all got up to together, if anything. But we should already be able to admit that others, like the millions of Americans on both sides of the article, of, of the aisle, who voted against status quo politicians two years ago, aren't and weren't ever traitors. And any campaign to label them as such is a is potentially more dangerous than anything, even a Trump presidency. Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between an investigation and neo-McCarthyism and hysteria. We crossed that line a long time ago. We crossed it. This is hysteria now. This is an attempt to squelch dissent. This is an attempt to uphold the status quo. Uh, and this is an attempt to silent the majority. And it's working. He just pointed out, Tim Black, he can't stream on YouTube. FBI is monitoring social media more than ever before, justifying it. This is a new Patriot Act. Silicon Valley is deciding what is and isn't free speech. Parody accounts and politics are being banned. A woman in Florida is uh, being told that she was influenced by Russia because she supports Trump. Do I agree with her on supporting Trump? No. I don't like Trump. Trump's awful. He's terrible. But Trump being terrible does not justify neo-McCarthyism and a red, a red scare and hysteria and stifling movements and dissidents. And uh, I'm able to see the difference. If you're on the left and you can't see the difference, shame on you. You're being a useful idiot right now. You know, Jimmy, Jimmy said that, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy said that over on the Jimmy Dore show. And it's true because you're hurting yourself. If you're part of independent media, progressive media, and you're not seeing the cyclical effects of Russiagate, I, I don't know what you're paying attention to. I don't know what you're paying attention to. Ben still says, thank you, Russian bots, for bringing me to Jill Stein. Uh, I now know what Edward R. Murrow felt like watching Joe McCarthy on TV. Abigail points out, I love how now every person who's not up Hillary's ass is a Russian agent. Well, this is a great article by, uh, by Matt TV, and I think it sums it up pretty well. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That was a clip from Get Your News On with Ron, the world's first viewer curated streaming news show. What does that mean? That means I log on to a stream and people tweet me articles over on Twitter at Ron Placone or they use our Reddit subsection, which is just get your news on with Ron over on Reddit. And that's how we build the show. I'm seeing all these articles for the first time. We are literally getting our news on together. Follow me on Twitter at Ron Placone so you can participate. And this show streams live every Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So please do tune in. If you want to support this show, you can do so over on patreon.com slash romplacone, where for as low as a dollar a month, you get access to exclusive podcasts every week, exclusive videos, free tickets to shows when I'm performing in your town, and more for as low as a dollar a month. Please do consider it. Thank you so much for your support. This has been Get Your News On with Ron.